Hey guys, today is 7 on Sunday. I feel like I'm just like really stressed today just because it's literally the morning of Sunday and I have to start work at 1, but I feel really bad because last week my video was like 4 days late. I can't seem to get anything done at the moment because I just have too much to do and it's stressing me out. But I really want to do my videos, but it's like something that's not becoming priority at the moment. So it's getting really, really annoying. But I'm like trying to do some filming and stuff here, but I'm also filming in my study area, which is more open. And my parents were upstairs like making breakfast for a really long time. And I didn't want to like have all that noise in the background to like really annoy you guys. But I'm trying, I'm trying, I'll see. Hopefully, hopefully I'll get this uploaded today. I'm really thinking, I should be able to do it, but who knows? But today we're going to be talking about trilogy recommendations. So this is another one that I kind of mentioned for the video chat because it's always fun, you know, to talk about standalones and duologies, trilogy series. Like it's always fun to recommend that, especially if people are only looking for a certain size of a book series or whatnot. And I definitely think trilogies are something that I've read the most of, but it's just so easy to have, you know, your group of three, you read all your books, you have your first one that sets up, your middle one that can either be really slow and boring or continues on the story, and the third one that has the epic conclusion. And all the trilogies I'm going to recommend, I'm sure you know all of them because I mention them all quite frequently. And I finished all of them, so they're all completely finished because I don't want to recommend a trilogy and then the last book's like really shit because I haven't read it and I didn't know. And I'm pretty sure all of these don't have like a continuation like there may be more books in like a new trilogy or a series but that's about other characters and i'm only going to be talking about this trilogy but it's when they have a trilogy and then it gets expanded on or then they bring out another book and you're just like okay but i mean there's some circumstances that did that really well like truly devious by maureen johnson when they brought out the other book and i was like yes so excited and of course grace is going to be linked down below so that you can get all the information from her about seven on sunday and also the goodreads will be linked down below which has a lot of useful information as well but i'm excited for this topic okay i'm going to mention white hot kiss by jennifer l armitroud and i know this is like a really old series even though i have seen some people start to read it more recently but this is definitely one of my og favorite trilogies and i'm sure if i read it again now i probably have maybe some different feelings about it but i've always kind of wanted to reread it because i do love jennifer l armitrout's books she writes so many though like there is literally so many of them in existence but I think she's a great author and I know I still haven't read her from Blood and Ash series. I haven't even bought the books yet. I really would like to and I think I might eventually just like go on a big book buying and just get all the trilogies and series that have been really popular lately that I just haven't gotten to because I'm trying not to buy more books and I'm low-key stressed that I'm not going to have enough space for the books that I already have so I can't just go out buying new ones. But this is just such a fun trilogy. It had the love triangle, it had the magical world, it had like a lot of, obviously because it's like an urban fantasy, it had references to our world but then it also had demons and there's also gargoyles which is something that you rarely see in books so I definitely think it's just an interesting story and Layla and Roth are still one of my favorite couples so I just this is a very nostalgic trilogy for me. Next I want to mention A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray. This is another I guess nostalgic one but again it just has the most beautiful cover like I read it for the cover alone even though I really did like Claudia Gray at the time and this one was really cool because it's about dimensional travel so it was really cool to see characters like jump into the body of other people and then having them like really grow as people and also you know you're going along and you're not sure who to trust or what to do and basically there's this like device that the main character Margaret's like going through the universe like looking for but she can't find it and then there's another love triangle like a lot of these OG series have love triangles which is annoying but I do think that this was like an okay one though but I just definitely recommend this trilogy like it was so well rounded and I didn't have any issues with it as a whole that was just very well paced and a very good book. Next I want to mention The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. So this is another one that's just like one of my like first books that I read when I got onto booktube and I'm still always going to just have like this really happy and nostalgic value for this trilogy because I think even though I had read fantasy before I feel like this is one of the first ones I really remember like captivating me and I was so excited reading this because again there's the idea. Obviously Leah's 
meant to marry this prince, but then she doesn't want to, so she runs away, and then the prince chases her, but then also an assassin chases after her. And the whole time, you're not actually sure which of the characters is the assassin and which is the prince, so you're not really sure who you want to root for. And it was an intense time, but then I do admit, like, once you get past the first book, it starts to get more into, like, the political kingdom side of things, which is still okay, but I really think the first book is where the, like, the magic was, because, as I said, it was, like, very intriguing not knowing what was going on and I got it wrong and I was so stressed about it but I really did enjoy this book it was a very fun time for me and I just would love everyone to read this trilogy next I want to talk about Illuminae by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff because this is just such a unique sci-fi story that I just think if you haven't picked it up yet you really need to because it was one hell of an experience because it's told in files and photos and like video log um, descriptions and it's just not the normal standard of how the story is written and that's the charm of it and I do like that we have like a companion series so we get to see different characters through each book and then we see that we're obviously like moving towards a big plot in the story when you come to the third book and everyone comes together but I definitely think it's just such a unique experience and a unique time and I have been wanting to reread it for the longest time because it's very easy to get through these books even though they're massive but like with the file format you definitely feel like you're reading a lot quicker than you normally would if that was just like 600 pages of just straight text but it's just such a cool experience that I highly recommend. Next I want to talk about Lady Helen and the Dark Days Club by Alison Goodman. This is still going to be a trilogy that I always talk about even though I would love it to be expanded because I want to have more story but this was definitely the trilogy that I read after I really needed a fix from like the Infernal Devices because it's basically the same. It's just that this book definitely goes way more into detail of like the everyday life and like how you get dressed and like the mannerisms and how you can't do this if you're a woman but you can do this if you're man and like there's a lot of stuff like that but I really appreciate this series because it was really cool and I really liked that they had the demon aspect but it wasn't like so in your face but I just loved watching Helen's growth into becoming like boss and it was just so fun and oh my god Will Castleman he's a man he's like I'm not a boy he's a man and it was just great like I really love this trilogy and there were so many like turns in it that I didn't expect to come and it was just so much fun like I highly recommend this trilogy if you haven't picked it up but this is only from an Aussie author so I don't think a lot of people really know about it but please it's so good oh my god I totally just like shot myself in the foot here because I wrote Akatar by Sarah J Mass on my list because technically it's a series but then it got expanded on but technically it's about other characters so I feel like this one this one works because like it's kind of like the next trilogy is about everyone else so oh my god and there's a novella I probably totally effed up here but I do feel that just with like Akatar, Akamath and Akawar they are a solid rounded trilogy and like if that was all we got I would have been happy because it was done so well and Akamath is still one of my all-time favorite books it is the best second book in a trilogy that I have ever read in my life and I know a lot of people feel the same way even though like I have reread Akatar and Akamath but I haven't reread Akawar which I feel like I would like to do at some point because Akawar still remains my most anticipated book I've ever had in my whole life like that whole year like was just peak booktube for me like, because I was in so much hysterics just waiting for this book and I had so many high expectations and even though it was like a little bit of a letdown I remember I just tried to get through that book as quickly as possible so I feel like maybe another read would like let me appreciate it a lot more even though I still really enjoy it like it's still like a five star trilogy I still had so much fun but this is something I really think a lot of people have already read and if they haven't read it I feel like people just don't want to read it because they don't want to like get into the hype of Sarah J Maas which I totally understand because there's some authors that are just so hyped that you don't even want to but I just oh it's just one of my favorites and I love it so much and lastly I want to talk about the Brown Sisters trilogy by Talia Hibbert because yes this is such a cute contemporary trilogy that I highly, 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 highly recommend that you pick up because, like, it's just, like, made me so happy. Like, even though Chloe Brown wasn't my favorite book, they just got better and better with each one. And I loved watching the sisters progress through their, like, romantic relationships, but also just, like, change as people. Like, not really change, but, like, become open to new opportunities and different things. And I just loved it so much. Just, like, watching the love stories. And I do like having the dual perspective because it was really nice to get the both sides 
of the relationships here and I do think that Charlie Hibbert really writes it in like such a realistic way but I'm so happy that I have read this trilogy and there's going to be a new trilogy in the series that I'm really excited about because I think it's going to be about a whole new set of siblings and I'm so keen. So guys that is all of my video recommendations for Seven on Sunday today and I know a lot of these trilogies are like some of the most popular out there but like they're popular because they're good you know <laughs> but anyway guys I hope you enjoyed thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time bye